One of the great things about music is its universal appeal. Though there's a very rich smorgasbord of musical styles and tastes, everyone connects with some form of music. And this is true because music truly is the language of our hearts. How many times have you listened to a song and felt like the words were written just for you? Or a very familiar song immediately transports your heart back to a precious moment in life. Sometimes it isn't even the words, but the music's rhythm and harmony alone that stirs our emotions. Box, St. Matthew's Passion, moves us to tears. And truly, who can sit still? Why? Oh, we fixed it up already. Later. If you ever saw the movie In and Out with Kevin Klein, there's this hilarious scene. He's listening to a tape on how to be a macho man. And after the narrator recites a list of things that real men would never be caught dead doing, that disco song, I Will Survive by Gloria Gaynor, begins to play. And the narrator says, remember, real men don't dance. And then the music grows louder and louder, and Klein is trying really hard to resist his temptation to dance. And then his foot begins to tap, and his shoulders begin to shake. And in an instant, he's up on his feet, and the music's getting louder, and he begins to sway. And the music hits that crescendo, and he's off in full-blown dancing, in total freedom and total joy. Music has that kind of power. It can express the inexpressible. It moves the immovable. And it enables us to feel our deepest emotions. Those are the gifts music brings into our lives, even church music. It is well with my soul brings us such great comfort in times of trial or great grief. The day of resurrection swells our hearts with hopeful joy. For as long as God's people worshipped, music has been an integral part of their gathering. And for us, our rich and varied musical history begins with our biblical ancestors. As we just heard, no one would have called those ancient Israelites the frozen chosen. Trumpets, lutes, hat, harps, tambourines, clanging cymbals, people dancing, people singing. Worship was a loud and raucous musical celebration of joy. All thanks to David, that youngest son of Jesse, who not only had, quote, ruddy good looks, but also a gift for writing poetry. And his hobby was creating musical instruments. And so even before the temple was built, worship Church music was part of worship, all thanks to that simple shepherd boy who would become a king. And once the great temple was built, his son, King Solomon, is said to have filled it with 400,000 harps and lutes and 200,000 silver trumpets. Now, most scholars agree that's probably a gross exaggeration sort of like that fish tail that gets larger than life each time it's retold. 
the splendor of Israel's worship life grew more spectacular as the story was passed down to each generation. But even if their memories of worship in the good old days was somewhat embellished, one thing the people of God wholeheartedly believed, that the creator of the universe is enthroned upon the praises of God's people. Whether it was on the mountaintop, in the temple, every facet of Israel's life was centered in worship. It even began as they left their homes. The streets of Jerusalem were filled with Jewish men, women, children singing and dancing, as we heard a couple of weeks ago, as they made their procession to the temple. And some of the earliest psalms written, like the one we started this worship service were, were those songs of praise that they processed singing. And they reminded our Jewish ancestors of how the people of God are to enter into the presence of God. Not begrudgingly or half-heartedly, but we are to enter into the presence of Almighty God, eager to make that joyful noise to God, eager to sing our praises of God. As Dean Willimon of Duke Chapel once said, quote, God is the great music lover, having created not one bird to sing, but millions. Creatures who spend their days doing nothing more than singing, even when we don't notice them. The waves beating upon the shore, the wind rustling the leaves in the tree, the thunder of a waterfall, all the sounds that make up the symphony of the universe, end quote. As the Bible itself says, all creation sings to the glory of God. And that theological buzzword glory, in Greek it's doxo, from which we get doxology. It's the offering of the creature's praise to the creator, from whom as we sing, all blessings flow. So we sing what we sing in here first and foremost to give God the glory and honor that God is due. And the only other time in the temple when the people sang was during the offering of the burnt sacrifices. The priests would circle the altar while singing, again, psalms of thanksgiving. God was given gratitude for the works of creation, for delivering Israel from their bondage, for bringing them into a land of honey and plenty, and for God's good and perpetual care of them. Those psalms of thanksgiving declare that the Holy One of Israel is a faithful God, a faithful God who enters into this human world, and a God who acts to humble the proud and mighty, and who lifts up the poor and oppressed. Whenever we sing about the mighty acts of God, it not only invokes our gratitude, but it inspires our faith and our deeper trust in the God who delivers us, the God who perpetually cares for us. The canticles we find in the New Testament follow in that tradition. Mary, Zechariah, and Simeon all sang to give thanksgiving to God for God's faithfulness to them. Mary, as we know, after hearing that she's about to give birth to the Savior of the world, burst forth in song, my soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. 
for God has done mighty things for me. Can we sing that each and every week? Rejoicing. And then old man Zechariah sings after the miraculous birth of John the Baptist, blessed be the God of Israel. For God looks favorably upon us. We say or do on hearing good news, we shout for joy. But when we are on the receiving end of God's faithfulness, our hearts burst forth in song. When Jesus was alive in the first century, the ordinary place for worship became the synagogue. Temple worship became relegated for all the great feasts. And worship in the synagogue consisted of reading and studying the law as we started this service with, of saying the daily prayers, and then of singing the psalms without musical instruments. After Jesus' resurrection, those followers of the way continued that style of worship until the Spirit, as we celebrated last week, was outpoured upon them at Pentecost. And then they came to believe that worship was the work of the Holy Spirit within the gathered community. As we worship by the power of the Holy Spirit, we, the people of God, are transformed more and more into the image and likeness of Christ. As we heard Paul say, be filled with the Spirit, sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, making melody to love the Lord in your heart. Music is the gift it's the conduit through which the Holy Spirit stirs within us, forming and reforming us into greater discipleship. And there's one final type of singing in the Bible. It's the music of heaven, the ceaseless worship of the angels before the throne of God singing, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to God forever and ever. Amen. Like that hymn, the book of Revelation contains a variety of others. Celebrating the ultimate reign of God on earth when God's will shall be done. Here as it is in heaven. So John wrote, for this reason... For this reason, God's people are before the throne of God, worshiping God day and night in God's holy temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will guide them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from every eye. We lift our voices in song to bear witness to that hope that lies only in God. The only hope that will never disappoint us. Why do we sing in worship? We sing songs of praise to give God the glory our creator is due. We sing songs of thanksgiving and gratitude for Jesus, our redeemer. And we sing songs of triumph to be empowered by the Holy Spirit because through our singing, we come to believe. And in our believing, we find our hope. Amen. Blessing, wisdom, and glory to God Almighty.
Amen.